Hi, this is Andrea Jennings. Welcome to Access for All Integrating Accessibility, where we explore the intersection of pop culture and accessibility. We'll shine a spotlight on those who are opinion leaders in the accessibility world. They are bringing change in this groundbreaking show. So join us each episode as we change the future. Other because we yes. serve on a commission, Accessibility Disability Commission. So it's so great um, to work alongside you and I know how powerful your contributions are to this commission and I appreciate you. Oh. Um, and w one of the things I want to know is just, I know that um, you are so dedicated when dealing with accessibility issues. I want to know how did you get started on that journey and I want to know a little bit about um, what is so important to you about accessibility and we talked about three things that you really wanted people to know and I, and I would love to discuss that as well. Okay. Well thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to be here and have an open discussion right. with you Right. and all the work that you've done. I'm. Very, I'm just in deep gratitude. Thank you. As we go on this journey together. Yes, so thank together, you. as we learn right. together. Right, yes. right. Yeah. You know, I always think that everywhere Beckett and I go, I think of everybody with a disability or anybody with an access issue, no matter what it is, are on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. So we need to bow in gratitude yeah. and step in yeah. with our heart and soul and educate. Yeah. And if they're resistant to education, then we can wrap back around and come another time and meet them, see if we can meet face to face yeah. and um, bring a program to them that they can understand. That's important um, as we are educators and part of um, the commission, we mm -hmm. work as um, advisors yes. to our council people. But I love what you're saying. You're saying, sometimes meet people where they're at yes and, yes and give it to people in baby steps and I love that because a lot of people think that accessibility is this one and done thing right and it's not it's a lifestyle hence this pop culture show right but yeah I would love to for you to continue on and yeah. talk about you know those three things that are important to you yeah. that you want people to know so so for mobility dog um, we advocate for people with disabilities, mm -hmm. and we find pathways forward. And when people come home from the hospital after a major accident or a DNA-driven disease that has gotten to a point that they need, they need more, or whatever the case may be, um, we're there to help them. So the medical team tells them all the things they can't do, Mm -hmm. And we bow to them and we say thank you. And Your what job we tell is done. people yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and what we tell people is, okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. But put that over there. Right. <laughs> and what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What is your dream? Mm -hmm. And just to keep going. Yeah. Because no matter what happens to any of us, yeah. what we come into this world with, what happens to us along the way, mm -hmm. it's our life and we need to live our dreams. Yes. And by forming a community I think that's the one huge thing different about our organization, Mobility Dog, is we form a community of people who have challenges, and together we go forward. And one of the gentlemen in our group, Carlos, mm -hmm. has always said, and I am repeating after him, everybody as they age mm -hmm. is going to be here sometime. Mm -hmm. I might have gotten here faster, yeah, got here a little quicker, yeah, but everyone's going to be have some challenges yeah. with movement, sight, hearing, whatever the case may be. And so it would be really nice if we could all bow in gratitude, hold each other's hands, mm -hmm. and understand that we're all here together. Yeah. And a big thing is accessibility for all, yeah. for everyone. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. 
what is a service dog so that our viewers and our audience can understand while we while we talk about um, service dogs and, and how you came into uh, having a business called um, Mobility Dog? A service dog is a dog that works at your side. They're trained. They have over 220 hours of training just to work with you at your side. Mm -hmm. They are a working dog. They're not a pet. They're not my dog that I just wanted to go to Amazon or somewhere and buy mm -hmm. a, a driver's license with their picture and an apron to wear that says service dogs. They're actually trained for that person and every service dog team looks different. Yeah. Um, each dog is trained special to help that person. We work with people with mobility issues, but we have hearing, we have um, guide dogs. Guide dogs lead from the front. Service dogs work at our side. There's also um, what's called emotional support dogs that are not service dogs, and they have no accessibility. They're pets that do fabulous things. Pets are very noble creatures, but uh, an emotional support dog is not a dog that has access anywhere. They are to stay home, right. and they comfort and take care of you at home. There's also companion dogs, mm -hmm. which also do not have any access. Mm -hmm. However, they are trained to get medication, to mm -hmm. call 911, to help that person within their home, within their apartment. That is so important. Many people group them all as one. So just the fact that you're distinguishing the different types of dogs yeah. uh, is so important, the different types of uh, service dogs. Um, and I want to know, I know we were talking about a story about how sometimes people greet you when they do see the dog and then they shrill. Um, and oftentimes, because I love dogs, I'm not a dog owner, but even I, even though I know better, they're just so cute sometimes. Yeah, they are. They but are. please, please give us some ground rules for those of us who don't know the etiquette of when we see a person with a dog that's performing a, a service or, yeah. I would love to, I wanted to say one more thing though. Mm -hmm. We also have therapy dogs. Yes. Okay, and a therapy dog You're is right. a dog that is actually certified. Mm -hmm. Service dogs are not certified. We would love them to be, because mm -hmm. it would save a lot of, a yeah. lot of problems, but, yeah. um, but a therapy dog is certified. Yeah. They go through a program with their handler, and then they visit hospitals, yes. um, schools, yeah. Cancer centers, yeah. autistic school, autism, schools with autism, all sorts of different yeah. categories. And they go and spend the day there. They do not have 24 7 access like yeah. service dogs, yeah. but they are allowed to go to these particular institutions and hospitals and places. When I was in the hospital when I first was injured and I had a spinal cord yes. injury, I had a service dog, it was a yellow lab, yes. come in the room. Yes. And she or he did not bark. Right. And so, you know, they're trained yes. to not bark. And it was an amazing experience. Actually, prior to me having that experience with a service mm -hmm. dog, I'm embarrassed to say, but I was I used to be afraid of larger dogs. Right, right. And because of that experience, because of the therapy dog that went right. into the hospital room, I wasn't afraid anymore. So yeah, I'm glad you brought up therapy yeah. dogs. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so we have a program, Pause, that empowers, mm -hmm. that we take out to all the schools and wag to businesses to help them. Mm -hmm. And so many children are so afraid. They say, this big dog. Mm -hmm. And we sit on the ground mm -hmm. around a blanket, mm -hmm. um, on a blanket or a rug, and I read them a story. And Beckett's in the middle, mm -hmm. and I take his harness off, and they're all snuggled up around him, oh. getting to understand that. You know, they're really nice because so many people have fears of big dogs yeah. just from personal experiences. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice to kind of break that and let them see that a service dog is picked for its temperament. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just was at the airport the other day and the guy, when we came through, mm -hmm. I have Beckett wait, I go through mm -hmm. with double, um, double canes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then wait. And he came through and the guy said, will he bite me? I have to check him down. I said, no, he's a service dog. <laughs> oh my God. But, no, I'm so happy yeah. that you explained this. And since we're talking about airports, then I, I would love to know, like, how can businesses um, and other public spaces do a better job of supporting people 
with uh, service dogs, you know, how can they do a better job of supporting? I think by asking the questions mm -hmm. of everybody. Mm -hmm. So they're allowed to ask two questions. Mm. They're allowed to ask if it's a service dog, mm -hmm. and what does your service dog, what tasks do your service dog perform that you need for your disability? Got it. And so you tell them yes. And we find a lot of times that people have fraudulent service dogs, mm. get kind of testy, kind of have an attitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas that who really need the service dog are happy they're asking and thrilled to tell them. Right. Because most dogs that are taken out of service, it is because they were attacked by another dog mm -hmm. that is in a space that they shouldn't have been in. Interesting. Okay. So it's really important. So we really appreciate being asked. Mm -hmm. um, and then just letting us live, just letting us, you know, go shopping. Yeah. I know everybody loves him and thinks he's adorable, yeah. but I'm going to the store and mm -hmm. I just kind of want to get my groceries mm -hmm. and just continue on. Yeah. And I'm happy to educate and happy to talk, yeah. but sometimes we just like to be. Yeah. And we talked about that. It's so good to live. I was telling you about a colleague uh, in, the, in the disability community in, mm -hmm. in the entertainment space. Her name is Andrea Levant. And she has a, a dog, a service dog, I believe her name is Goji. Uh -huh. And Goji goes to the Oscars. <laughs> Speaking about let's, let's live, right? right let's right. just live. <laughs> she goes to the Oscars. And I showed you some pictures right. where she has a birthday hat. Yes, of, so She cute. celebrated her birthday and then she will dress her. Um, and have her wear shoes on right. the red carpet, but that's a great example of let's just let's let us live and yeah and and I think sometimes for me when I became disabled it wasn't the disability I always tell people it's the barriers and right. a lot of people use terminology like wheelchair bound right and I'm like my wheelchair wasn't you know I wasn't <laughs> bound to the wheelchair it was quite freeing because it right. allowed me to live it, that's you know? right so I totally get what you're saying I really get what you're saying. I saw a documentary about a uh, mobility dog that I, it was, it was very um, instrumental in me really understanding the wide um, variety of people who really need service dogs and different types of service dogs as we talked about. Um, please give me, tell me how, how you decided to do the documentary. I'm a filmmaker, I love entertainment, so I think that was a great vehicle to use to educate people, so right. yeah. We wanted a way to get the word out there for people that weren't, we weren't seen on the streets, mm -hmm. we weren't, weren't comfortable talking to us. You know, people don't realize, you know, they see a dog mm -hmm. and um, they say, like in the airport, they, well, how can you get your dog on your plane, on the plane? <laughs> I just smile. I said, well, I have a disability. So it'd be really cool to be here without my dog, right. but I'm so grateful to have my dog. Yeah. And they'll look at me funny and they say, well, why did you choose a dog? And I'll say, because having a dog, I am in more of an upright position. I am a more natural position. So I'm strengthening my core and I'm allowing myself more longevity that I can stay on my feet longer and be on my feet longer as I'm aging yeah. because I'm able to strengthen myself because of my positioning yeah. and I'm so grateful to have him. Yeah. Um, having a service dog, like I'd said earlier, looks different for everyone. For some people, mm -hmm. um, we have um, five of our service dogs are at college mm -hmm. with their, and their, none of their handlers could have gone to college without a dog at their side or they would have had to have a full-time assistant. Yeah. So what the dog allows them to go and live their whole day. That is so powerful. And the powerful. dog is able to get what they need yeah. and help them. And then some of them at nighttime have a nurse come in to mm -hmm. do some medical things that mm -hmm. need to be done, but they can actually leave them at night because yeah. the dog can alert. The dogs can dial, learn how to press the 911 button. Mm -hmm. And when they press that button, the owner's recorded voice or someone else's calls mm -hmm. to three people. Mm -hmm to let them know that they're in an emergency situation mm -hmm. and um, get the ambulance or whatever they need there in a timely fashion. Speaking of that, a lot of people don't talk enough about epilepsy. Right. And so um, how, how do service dogs help people with epilepsy? So epilepsy is a tricky one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, so what they do is they cannot tell you that you have going to be having a seizure. Mm -hmm. For epilepsy, what they can do is tell you that there's a change in mm -hmm. the way that you smell. The hormones, maybe, yeah. And mm -hmm. so they can smell it at your ankles, they can mm -hmm. smell it at your neck, under your arm, mm -hmm. and they will alert for that. Mm -hmm. And so that alert is to get you in a safe position. And sometimes for seizure dogs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a surge that is happening and you're not actually going to have a seizure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do have a seizure. Mm -hmm. But so they, they alert in that way. But it's getting to know you and the longer they're with you, mm -hmm. the better alerting that they can do. Mm -hmm. Seizures is a tricky one. Gotcha. Tricky one. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for explaining we, that though. Yeah, yes. That's so, so interesting, yeah. It is fascinating. We had a um, gentleman um, with Parkinson's mm. and I have permission to share mm -hmm. and we took the dog out. The dog had never met him before mm. and was sitting there along with some of his children and family members mm -hmm. and Monty was sitting there very proud just right next to our service dog trainer and all of a sudden he helped just got up mm. and went right over to M. Mm -hmm. And he stuck his nose right under his arm, and he was like, "Oh, what's he doing? What is he doing? What is he doing? Right? To me? This is so <laughs> silly. Why is he doing this?" And then he went around the other side and stuck his nose underneath his other arm. That must and he's have like, been. "Okay, this is just, yeah. this just is That's, so silly. Yeah, yeah, what is yeah, he doing?" Yeah. And then he went over. He smelled his ankles very intentionally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he put his paw and his head right on his lap. Oh. And at the same moment he was doing that, mm -hmm. he just passed out. Wow. So from over there, he smelt the changes. Wow. And that's what I was talking about with the epilepsy. With the epilepsy, yeah. And all the medical alerting. Yeah. Cardiac, diabetes, mm -hmm. all those different pots. Mm -hmm. um, all these different things that the dogs alert for. Mm -hmm. It's all about their smell mm -hmm. and what they're smelling and the changes in the blood mm -hmm. and changes in the fluid in their bodies. So interesting. So the yeah. dogs always belong. I met a lady the other day and she mm -hmm. goes, no, my dog needs to be up here in the chair with me so it can alert. And I'm saying, no, mm. service dogs are always four paws on the floor, mm. always. Yeah. And they can smell the same smell here. But, yeah. As they can up here. They're dogs, right? So, yeah. they have so a service dog is always on the ground. Got you. They're not carried. Right. They don't have those extendable leashes. Mm -hmm. They have a two to six foot leash, mm -hmm. and they're always on leash, mm -hmm. unless they're doing a task, and they can go off the off the leash when they're performing a task yeah. and come back. But always have to be under voice control the work that you do, the wonderful work that you do, how has it improved accessibility in our daily lives, in our communities? You know, I'm just living my life. Mm -hmm. And I was brought up in a candy factory. And I remember when I was a small kid, we, we all had, we were required to work a few hours mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. and. I had to clean the toilets. Mm. I'm like, really? And my dad goes, yeah. You need to learn every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to label bags. You need to unpack. You need to scrub. You need to do everything. And so I did. And I think that background prepared me for whatever life brought me. And yeah, it sucked. But that's not where my focus was. My focus mm -hmm. was on, okay, we can do every aspect of this and make it a better place for everyone. And I don't really know how to think differently. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you see somebody struggling with something, you go and say, you know, if you just turn the door that way, or you could make a little ramp here, mm -hmm. or you could do a light there, mm -hmm. or you could, you know, get out more. Mm -hmm. Everything changes. I, I love that, and I and I and that you've already answered one of my other questions. Like, what was your motivation? It sounds just like, you know, your your upbringing. Yeah. You know, uh, and and I love what you're saying. It's not something that you you do. 
you, you're not thinking about it. This is not a checklist. Mm -hmm. This is not something mm -hmm. that you're trying to do. It just happens in everyday life. If you see a barrier, you want to help people to remove those barriers. Right. Right. That's just what you do. And that's the way it should be. So many people think of accessibility as something that is um, a checklist. Yeah, you fix know? it. It's it, done. Right. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. And even some of the things that I do as, you know, as a strategist, I, I, I feel like I'm very similar to a generalist. Yes. Where I actually tell people accessibility is a very, very broad field, right? Mm -hmm. So I can get you over to the specialist like Janie who knows about, she's a business called the, yeah. you know, mo yeah. the mobility yeah. dog. Is it mobility dog? Mobility, mobility dog. dog. Mm -hmm. And so I can get you over to her and she can tell you because that's what it is, accessibility is a whole lifestyle. Right. And so I think that when people watch this show and they can see the different people that we have on it, like yourself, yeah. they see that this is definitely something that you have to sit and learn take baby steps as we right. talked about right. in the beginning as you said meet people where they are right and I, and I just love this conversation is there anything else that you want to leave us with about um, service dogs the people who have used them um, and also I want to know from you what are some myths that are, are misconceptions that the general public have that you want to clear up now I think it's really important for people to know that a service dog is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're out working with it and stuff, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember as a kid growing up, um, well, as a teenager, we would exercise with Jane Fonda. Mm -hmm. And she always had a thing, if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it, come mm -hmm. on guys. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and so we'd work that much harder at aerobics and all, mm -hmm. but it's so true with service dogs. Yeah. So you can be brought a service dog that's completely trained, mm -hmm. ready to work for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to use it every day and you're not mm -hmm. going to train it every day and work with it every day, it's going to not, it's going to just lose that yeah, and just become a pet. Remember. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons our organization is one of the few that is actually a community. And mm -hmm. everybody stays with us the entire working life of their dog. Mm -hmm. And we do first Saturday training sessions mm -hmm. for p service dogs in training and full-fledged service dogs that have been working three to four years. Mm -hmm. Because as we age, our bodies change. Mm -hmm. So how we hold the leash, how we hold the, the harnesses, mm -hmm. everything changes. So we need to constantly be working with them. Yeah. Um, when people are, when we're out and about, we want them to talk to us, not mm -hmm. our service dog. Mm -hmm. Because that one second mm -hmm. that that woman comes racing down the shrilling and saying, ah, oh, it's so cute. And their hands going that one second yeah. that gives them joy to touch your dog, mm -hmm. they're leaving mm -hmm. and your dog's been distracted. Mm -hmm. And if we're going across the street, mm -hmm. it could really cause a, an injury. It's important that um, our dogs only have eyes for us yeah. and they love everybody and they love, you know, but there's time they get that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say, like a gentleman said to me just walking down Dayton mm -hmm, <laughs> during mm -hmm. the pandemic, I see you, you don't need a, I see you see, you mm -hmm. don't need a dog. Mm -hmm. And it was like, thank you. <laughs> but, but the dogs are for all sorts of different things. The misconception that only blind or low vision right. people need dogs. Right. I even read that uh, deaf people also use service dogs yes, at times. Yes, so, yeah. and, to, and they're, wonder, they're wonderful mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. it can in, increase their life and yeah. what they do and the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I think that's important. I think it's important for them to realize that mm -hmm. our dogs play. Mm -hmm. A happy service dog, um, happy dogs make the best service dogs, mm -hmm. and they do play. They run and get to do all the doggy because what we love about a dog service dog mm -hmm. is your canine spirit mm -hmm. so they do get to play and mm -hmm. they're not stuck and confined in these leashes and harnesses and they're all custom made mm -hmm. for the most part mm -hmm. so they're comfortable it's not like they're the stuff, harnesses are the custom harnesses. made yeah. yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like people to know that yeah and that they do play Beckett 
loves to go play on the side of the yard and yeah. he has a ball that he drops in an automatic fat thrower. So he and has he, a ball. Oh, he has a blast. <laughs> so you, that is so, I'm so happy that you brought that up because that's something that I think you're right. It doesn't mean that people are going to still, they're not going to stop. It's not going to stop people from stopping you, right? No, no. But However, there are probably many people who do that because they just feel like, oh, I want to play with them. Yeah. So thank you for yes. helping dispel that myth or yeah. that misconception that they are not having fun. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're always looking for puppy raisers mm -hmm. and co-raisers that raise up the dogs. Mm -hmm. They kit them when they're eight weeks old mm -hmm. and they teach them basic manners and bring them into the house, how to have good manners at home, obedience, and they keep them until they're 18 months old. Mm -hmm. And um, they work with us and do all the training mm -hmm. and then they go to our service dog trainer and get specialized work before they go out with their forever handlers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just all those pieces are just so important. I just want to tell you, thank you for being here because this information is really helpful for people to understand. Um, and I think that you said it so eloquently. You gave us etiquette. We, we learned a little bit about what your business does or what you do in your business. How can people get in touch with you if they want to support Mobility Dog or if they need a, a service dog? Please let us know. Yes, um, the best way to reach us is at our website, mm -hmm. which is mobilitydog.org. And it has layers and layers. We have students from around the globe that call and ask permission to use our website for their research projects mm -hmm. about people with disabilities, mm -hmm. about service dogs. Um, and so it's really, it's got lots of good information, mm -hmm. but we're looking, we just moved into our new office. Yes, right next to the Western Justice Center on Grand. Wow. And so we're thrilled to be there with a lot of other nonprofits That's whose great. thread is education. Yes. We feel and very honored. Where can we see that great documentary that I saw? Oh, so if you go to our website, mm -hmm. um, mobilitydog.org, and there's a bar that goes across the top and just click on it, and it'll take you to a beautiful documentary that highlights three people in our community um, their life story and why they have a service dog mm -hmm. and how you know one gentleman was he was never gonna walk and he's walking today next to a service dog and he's living yeah. his life and the next big thing is he used to fish all the time and so we're working with propping the dog behind mm. and get him out on that fishing boat Wow! so that's what service dogs are about it's about living all of your life and removing barriers. And removing barriers. So that we can yeah. have Barrier access free. for all. Access for everyone. Yeah, integrating accessibility. Thank you so much, Janie. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time, your service, and your work. Thank you, Andrea. It's a joy to be here with you. I'm really grateful. And I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for being a part of this there. show. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you learned something today watching Access for All Integrating Accessibility where we dive deep into the subject of accessibility beyond and above compliance.